Hello everyone, welcome to PyLearning. In today's video, I am going to share my experience of appearing for different data engineering interviews. Now, in the last couple of years, I have worked for two companies as a data engineer. My first company was Point Logic Development in Rotterdam, Netherlands. There, I started as a Python developer, but I was working in the field of ETL. ETL means Extract, Transformation and Loading. After one and a half year, I switched to a new company, which is my present company called WorkSpot. There also, I am working as a data engineer. So, I have appeared for two different data engineering interviews in the last couple of years. And today, I am going to share with you all the information about those two data engineering interviews, the different rounds I faced, what kind of technical interviews I went through, what was the cultural fit required for the companies, and a lot of other things. Now, here is a side note. This video is going to be really useful for people who are applying for junior level data engineering positions or medium level data engineering positions. For lead developer positions, I think there are a lot of other things that goes into the account. So without further delay, let's get started and understand what are the things that I went through during this data engineering interviews and see if some of those details can help you in your next round of interviews. Now, like I mentioned, the first company I applied for is Point Logic. I had my interview with two lead developers from Point Logic as my first round of interview. They asked me a lot of questions about Python, my studies, what I was doing for my thesis, how was I using Python in my thesis, what are my long term objectives and how do I see myself in the next five years. Now remember, don't ignore any of those questions. All those questions are really important. These questions help the recruiters give an idea about the student or the person uh, or the candidate who is applying for the interview to see how, what is the motivation factor behind the person for applying for this position. So I was very careful in answering all of them. In fact, I was completely honest with them. I told them that I was originally from the mechanical engineering background and then I did my masters in transportation engineering. During my transportation engineering, I liked intelligent vehicles as a subject and I decided to pursue my thesis in the field of intelligent vehicles. And the company that allowed me to do the thesis asked me to code the entire control system of robotics in Python. So they did ask me if you are already happy with the kind of thesis that you are doing, maybe the company will extend your thesis to a permanent job. I said, yeah, they may do it. However, there is no such guarantee. Also, just because from a thesis student to a network engineer, which was the next position, if you, even if they offer me the job of a network engineer, I don't think I would be operating with Python. And Python is one of the languages that I definitely want to work with because I'm really interested in it. So therefore, that was the overview of the first round of interview. After two weeks, they called me for the second round. That was a technical interview. They basically gave me a question and asked me to solve it in the next one hour. The question was, they have a bunch of raw data in different folders in zipped format and they wanted me to unzip each of those folder, folders, read all the CSV and then store them to a database. Now, uh, during that time, before I applied for the uh, point logic uh, development uh, position, I had done a course uh, on Coursera about uh, database management with Python and that course really helped me a lot. I understood the importance of entity relationship management uh, in SQL and therefore I also had some knowledge about how SQL works. I was already doing a little bit of Python so that was also useful. Now when I was doing the interview it was always in my mind that if I don't complete the test they are not going to select me. However after the interview process got over it turns out that that is not the case. They are not looking for an answer. They are looking for the way you are trying to solve the problem. By the end of the uh, test, I wasn't able, able to uh, finish the entire problem. So they just asked me, show how you did it. So I showed them the code. The basic process I was following was I wrote a small piece of code that first unzips everything and then reads every CSV file 
and then stores everything together as a data frame and then basically loads bulk loads everything to the database they asked me how did uh, why did you choose that why not read every file one at a time i said because it is going to take a lot of time bulk loading is much faster than loading every csv file one after the other they seem to be satisfied with it they also asked me about how i have uh, designed my databases or basically design the tables in my databases so i told them that i used this concept of primary key and foreign key and it was basically an entity relationship modeling and they were also pretty happy so 3 weeks later they uh, the hr from point logic uh, development company called me and said that they were happy with my technical interview and they feel that i am eligible for a junior data engineering position however they still had to do a cultural interview test now remember cultural interview is one of the most important interviews of any interview process it it is really important that you as a person are a cultural fit for the company otherwise there are going to be a lot of discrepancies uh, among you and the other members of the company and that is not good for the company so make sure every time you are appearing for an interview read about the company what kind of ethics what kind of goals what kind of beliefs does the company operate with that will help you to get into the right mood and you know answer questions during a cultural interview so now let's move on to the second interview after working there for more than one and a half years i decided that i want to change my company i wanted to uh, experience other challenges in the field of data engineering and i feel i was ready to take on the next one and suddenly i get this call from a recruiter on linkedin saying that he might have a position for me in one of the companies in amsterdam so i i was very curious it was the first time it was happening to me i had never uh, in my life uh, experienced a recruiter from linkedin contact me directly for applying for jobs apparently that happens a lot here but that was my first time all the times before i was the only one who was finding jobs on the internet and was applying to them directly but turns out if you already have some work experience and if you have a good linkedin profile recruiters easily find you so remember whatever you are doing always have an up to date linkedin profile that is really going to help you or help recruiters find you online so that you can easily find a job of your choice so the recruiter found me and then he asked me to talk to this lead developer uh, the lead developer of uh, workspot at that time had a 15 to 20 minute conversation with me and he asked me about what kind of technologies we were using what kind of languages i code with what do uh, where do i see myself i think this question uh, was uh, repeated in all the interviews like where do you uh, see yourself in the next 5 years or 3 4 years so uh, think about it uh, instead of being artificial think about a logical uh, answer that is truthful and really shows where you want to be in the next 3 to 4 years i think that is very important so after that 15 20 minutes of uh, uh, chat he called me to the workspot offices uh, for a technical interview so see i appeared for technical interviews in both the companies again in the technical interview he gave me a dataset and he asked me to clean it up using uh, python now this uh, technical interview i felt at that time was much easier than the technical interview i had applied for while i was applying for point logic you know because there i had to think about the database uh, how the tables should be joined how to unzip uh, python files here there was no such thing little did i know that he was looking for something else so i uh, wrote the uh, wrote a small piece of code using pandas library i read the csv file uh, Uh, removed all the impurities and i showed him the data frame he said yeah but you are using a library i said yeah python is known for third party libraries you know he said no write a general code don't use any libraries i want to see how you see python how you use python without using any of the libraries after all it's a programming language like any anything else right so i said okay i'm going to do it and then uh, that surprisingly took me more time than i had actually thought because uh, we might think we know something or even if you know something we are not used to doing it that way you know because we are used to the uh, 
the obvious way like for me every time i was uh, trying to read a file uh, on my laptop i used pandas or i used a, a, some kind of a library it never occurred to me that i should also try to do it with just normal python code you know with open csv file uh, in a re read mode as input things like that so that really pushed me and remember i was uh, in a technical interview so your mind works uh, you get confused you get stressed a lot more than when you are working in your drawing room for example you know so still i finished it and then he asked me okay the, this looks good uh, do one thing in the uh, here is another data set same as like that but uh, write the code for this so i thought to myself i just wrote the code for this why is he asking me to write the code for this second data set again where the column names are the same data type is the same impurities are the same i mean it was a very small data set i think it was a data set of probably 50 60 lines so then i thought to myself i told him but it's the same data set i think this code will do the job he said okay but uh, how, what about reusability i said okay i can write a function he said yeah i wanted to see that whether you are writing a function or you are just showing me a small piece of code and then it occurred to me that yeah these things are really important i mean answering a question is important but answering questions the right way is more important because see one of the things that i derived from all the interviews is that anyone can find a solution to the question if they sit with it for two three days you know it's very easy at least in the field of uh, in in this age of internet with stack overflow and everything you can easily find solutions to all the questions however it is your attitude to solving a problem that really matters so thankfully i cleared the technical test and then he asked me a question why should i hire you i told him with uh, regards to me you will never have any doubts about what i don't know i am always honest with what i don't know and you will always find a reason to teach me new things about data engineering also i believe in under uh, promising and over delivery and also i am always open to learn and i am in this uh, time of my career where i'm only one and a half years experience in data engineering and i want to explore more and therefore i can be a really good fit for this company he seemed very satisfied so they called me for the third round of interviews and the interview was with my CTO, current CTO. And we basically talk, uh, talked about their infrastructure. Again, I think that interview was more of a cultural fit interview. You know, he wanted to see if I was culturally uh, able to fit the, uh, uh, the company there, the people there, if I could easily hang out or I could easily manage with the other employees of WorkSpot. And I think that went pretty well. We talked about a lot of things. We talked about events, organizations, how, uh, what kind of events would I like to suggest uh, the company for their annual event. So things like that. And it went very smoothly. So finally, I was able to clear the uh, interview. And now I'm working as a data engineer at WorkSpot. So if I have to summarize what I learned from both the interviews, I think uh, number one, it is very important that you have your motivation clear why you're applying for a data engineer what is the real reason behind you becoming a data engineer rather than a normal programmer what is it that is really motivating you towards the field of data second thing technical interviews are very common everywhere people will ask you questions about reading uh, different kinds of data especially if you're applying for a junior or medium position of a uh, of data engineer they're going to ask you about how you use Python to read data or they might ask you questions about uh, Spark or uh, uh, MySQL or things like that. So basically technologies that they're using. So every time you're going to a data engineering interview, make sure to go through their stack. Ask the company or whoever is contacting you to tell them about your stack and try to learn as much as you can about the stack that the company is using. And the third thing, if I can summarize, is that cultural fit is very important for every for almost every company these days. No matter if you are a talented programmer, you can solve every problem. However, if they cannot trust you 
or they are not comfortable around you it is very difficult for you to find a position in that company now cultural fit does not necessarily mean that you have to lie to them be frank with them tell them everything true about yourself show them the value they are, that they are going to get from hiring you tell them everything about your weaknesses your strength and tell them how you can easily fit in into the company i think at the end all the companies want to hear the truth so guys hopefully this session was really useful for giving you insights into how to appear for data engineering interviews if you have some other question make sure to put them down in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to pilenin i will see you in the next video